Hello everyone, welcome back. We're here reading more about Mariana. Today we're just going to read one chapter because I want to um, give you some time to do some thinking on your own, some independent thinking, and consider what we can do to help her out. Okay, so this chapter is chapter six, Becoming a Butterfly. Here's a picture. And the first page says, Inside Tia Letty's lab laboratory, plants were all over the window sills and tables. We sat down in front of the frangipani plant with little yellow flowers. They looked like tiny stars peeking through the plant's green leaves. I thought for a minute, my halo plant is missing part of its pollination system. The insects here are not helping to pollinate my plant. If I can't bring an insect here to fix the system, take a second and think about, not think about, remember why that's not going to be a good idea. Why, sh why should she not bring an insect to the area to help pollinate her plant? You remember it might happen to hurt the region? Remember with the papayas? Oh, they brought an insect to the or they brought an insect to the area and it ended up infesting all the papayas. That wasn't good. <clears throat> if I can't bring an insect here, is there some way I can fix it myself? Can I pretend to be a butterfly and pollinate my ohalo? Now you're thinking like an engineer, said Tia Letty. In my laboratory, we have some plants like your ohalo plant. She led me to a funny cone-shaped plant with deep red flowers. This plant does not have a natural pollinator here in the Dominican Republic. We agricultural engineers, people who work with plants and crops, need to act like insects to pollinate it. You pretend to be butterflies here in your lab? I asked. I pictured Tia Liddy and her co-workers fluttering around the lab with giant wings. That's not what she means. In a way we do, said Tia Liddy. We use a little tool with a fuzzy surface or texture like butterfly to act like butterfly legs and carry pollen. I could do that, I said excitedly. Then I would be the pollinating mariposa for my ohalo plant. Tia Letty picked up a small stick from the table next to her and handed it to me. There was a fuzzy ball on the end of the stick. This is the technology we use here to pollinate plants, she said. This is technology, I asked. Doesn't look like technology. Tia Letty smiled. Technology is anything that humans make to help solve problems. I don't think this tool would help me, though, I said. The flowers on my ohalo plant are small. I would need a smaller pollinator. Tia Letty nodded. I think you're right. But you can design your own hand pollinator. You've already shown me that you have all the skills you need to be a good engineer. So here's Mariana and her pollinator. So what Tia Letty was describing is they put this part next to the flower. It picks up the pollen just like the insects. And then they touch it to another flower. My mind was buzzing like a beehive. I know what size pollen later I will need, but I'll have to look carefully at the shape of the ohalo flowers, too. And I'll need to find a material that has the right texture to pick up the pollen and drop it off on another flower. That's very smart, Mariana. You can use your imagination and think of lots of ideas. Then you can create and test your design to make sure it will work. It might take a few tries. If your first design doesn't work, 
you can always improve it or try another one. Engineers use all of the steps in the engineering design process when we are solving problems. Tia Letty smiled at me. I'm really proud of you, Mariana. I couldn't wait to begin designing my own pollinator. So here's Mariana about ready to get to work. And with her final designed pollinator. And that's the end of our chapter. Okay, so hopefully in thinking about our story today, you've had some time to think about how we can help Mariana or how she can continue to use that information to help her solve her problems. Have a good day, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.